Hey guys, Pascal here and in today's video I give you some tips on how to get better close-up shots for your travel b-roll footage. Usually what you mean with close-up shots is that you go so close to something that you don't show the complete object anymore. So for example, when you film a person, then you only film the head or you film the hand or something like that, but you don't film the complete person. So this is a close-up shot. And in this video, this is not 100% correct when I say close-up shot, because we will also have some objects that are completely in the shot, but we're very close there. So these are usually small objects like flowers, for example, that I show here. Yeah, but Let's get started with the tips. So the first tip that I have here is that, well, it's quite complicated to bring movement into close-up shots. Because if I have my camera like that now and I zoom in fully, let's say you're at a hundred millimeter or whatever, we'll actually with that lens, I will only go to around 70 millimeter today when I use the crop mode of the Panasonic GH5. So for the people that also use the GH5 and the Sigma, you can actually go to around 70 millimeters with that when you use a speed booster, but you have to use the X teleconverter functionality because that crops in a bit in your sensor and then you have around the same um, view as you would get with 70 millimeter on, on full frame. So we will only get as close as that in this video. But of course, if you want to get really close, it's even better to have another zoom lens or a macro lens. So I just turn my camera on now. So let's get a close up shot here of the little flower. And if I would only do that handheld right now, I'm just trying to do it right now. And it doesn't look too bad but it's very complicated, especially also because the more you zoom in, the shallower your depth of field goes. So it's actually harder when you move your camera, even if you move your camera slightly forward or backward, then it's easy that it gets out of focus. So you wanna make sure that you have an easy movement with your camera. And this is actually why I use this tripod right now. Of course, this is just the Photo Pro here. It's not the best tripod for that. It's better if you use a big tripod, but that can also do the job in a lot of times as you would see now. So I would actually say, I mean, this is not ideal for getting a shot of the flower now. I could do that. But what I want to do now, I want to get a shot of those plants here. And then I want to transition to the back because that looks quite nice. So I set my tripod up here. Then I focus correctly. I'm still at 70 millimeters. And now I screw the ball head of my tripod a bit. I unscrew it a bit so that I can move it around. And now I can easily get some nice movement here. Well, that makes everything a lot easier. And when I'm getting the shot, we can actually come directly to the second tip. And the second tip is that you should play around with the focus. Because even if you have a slow lens, let's say an F4, or even if you're at F6, let's say you're fully zoomed in and 6.3 or whatever, this is pretty slow, but if you're fully zoomed in and you're close to an object, you still get a lot of background blur and that looks great. And when you shoot videos, then it's actually nice to play around or transition with the background blur. So this is what I want to do now. It's actually, it's very hard here because the autofocus with this lens and this camera because it doesn't work natively together really good. I have to do a manual focus transition here. So what I do, I grab the focus ring and now I do the same movement again to the left and at the same time I turn the focus ring so that the background gets into focus. It wasn't perfect, I was a bit uncomfortable here. Always make yourself comfortable when you get a shot. Let's do that again. Yeah, the tripod is really not the best for that. I have to stabilize it a little bit in post, but I think you got the idea, right? So let's tighten that a little bit. And focus transitions is actually something that you cannot just do when you move your camera like I did right now, but you can also do it when you just get a steady shot. And this also 
one thing, one tip that I want to give you here, you don't have to move your camera all the time when you do close-up shots, because in a lot of cases, it's actually that the subject is moving. For example, when I film a flower here and there's some wind, and then the flower is shaking, and that already creates some movement. Of course, there are a lot of other good examples. You can use people that are, that are moving and so on, but just by not moving your camera, that also makes it a lot easier, especially if you don't have a tripod and you just want to hold your camera still. So also do that, and especially when you do it like that, then it's also a lot easier with focus transitions. We can actually do that again here. So now I just hold my camera still. Let's go to the flower here again. Go back at 70 millimeter. So yeah, that looks great. And now I can do a steady focus transition. You first see the flower, it's slightly shaking. Now I turn the wheel. And there we have a very nice focus transition from the foreground object to the background object. So this actually is something that you can do all the time when you do close-up shots and it just looks very cool. And my next tip for close-up shots is that you should use the light in a proper way. Of course, that always counts for videography, but especially for close-up shots, you can get very creative with it. For example, here is a very good example right now. The sun is behind those leaves here. So if I get a close-up shot, shot of the leaves, yeah, let's go 70 millimeter, and the sun is behind it and it act, it's actually a very nice look. That's nice because now you can see around those leaves here how the sun gets a bit reflected there. So that looks pretty nice. But of course you don't always have good light. So what we did before actually was to use artificial light. The light that I had was this here from Aperture. It's the ALM9. It's not so good, I would say. It could be a little bit brighter. I mean, it's not too low, of course. It's, it has a decent amount of brightness, but it could still be even a bit more for the stuff that we did there. What we simply did is we put the light in different angles around the flowers, and that allowed us to get much better shots. Of course, you need a second person or a tripod for that. Otherwise, it can be a bit complicated with two hands and it gets quite shaky. But when you have an artificial light with you and the lighting is not perfect, you can use artificial light easily for shots like that to make it look a bit sunny. For example, in the shot that I show you right now, you can see right now that there is the light pointed at the flower and it looks quite nice, right? It looks a bit more sunny. And now when we take the light away, then it doesn't look that nice anymore, right? So yeah, have a, have a small light with you. I recommend to get something that is as bright as possible, probably a bit brighter than my light, and you get even better results, but that can help a lot. Just a little more tip here, what you can also do, especially when you film flowers, you could drop a little bit of water on there, because then it looks a bit more like morning when the dust came out, and because of that, there's a little bit of water uh, on the plants and then the light get re gets reflected there so that looks pretty nice we didn't do that here because we didn't have water around here right now I actually forgot to bring a bottle which is not that smart yeah but this is also a good tip to play around with lightning especially if you want to get a morning mood then also use a bit of water there and the last tip I want to give you here is actually about storytelling. So it's a bit more theoretical because it happens in post when you edit your video. But of course you need to get the shots first and you need to know what you want to film there. And yeah, what I mean with that is simply that with close-up shots, it's very easy to tell stories or to at least have sequences in your video because close-up shots allow you to like show step by step what's happening somewhere. Of course, you can also get close to something with a wide angle lens and show that, but usually when you film it a bit zoomed in and you really focus on what's happening, that makes it very interesting. And that's actually why I think that close-up shots should be used more in travel videos. So let me give you a practical example here. What we did before was like, she went to the flower and smelled on it and I filmed that. And it's just a very short sequence of two clips. Like at first I filmed only her hand, like pulling the flower. And then I filmed her head with the flower, how she's smelling. 
and that already is a like small sequence it's not like a, a big story or something but it's a small sequence that shows what someone does at a place we're here in Monjam in Chiang Mai right now where they grow a lot of flowers and a lot of vegetables and so on so it's nice to show something like that you can perfectly combine that for example after a drone shot like you first show those mountains there then you show the hand grabbing a flower and she smiles and she's happy because the flower the smell of the flower makes her happy and stuff like that so really when you shoot close-up shots think about that think about how you can use close-up shots to create sequences in your videos that make the viewer engage a bit more with the stuff that you film there so close-up shots are really good for that and i think if you implement that in your travel videos that will make your videos a lot better because then your videos make more sense so so much for that today i hope you liked that video and i could help you a little bit to get better close-up b-roll footage if yes then please leave me a like and also if you want to see more tutorials like that in the future then don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell notifications button right now so i publish one video every sunday see you next week